Well, hello there, friends, and welcome back to the Marley Bird YouTube channel and part two of the My First Knit Toe Up Socks. This is part of the 2020 Sock Along I am doing in collaboration with my friend Ron Strong. I asked Ron to design the crochet toe up version and I did the knit toe up version and I gotta say these are spectacular, very basic, very vanilla patterns that even a beginner knitter or a beginner crocheter can tackle. These patterns are also free and available at marleybird.com. I've put a link in the video description box right down there below. All you need to do is click that link and it will take you to the blog post for the sock along. In that blog post, you will find all the information you need to participate. Or if you're catching these videos after the sock along is over, you will find the materials list there as well as the links to each section of the pattern. Simply scroll down to the bottom of the blog post and you will see where it says section one, section two, section three for either the knit pattern or the crochet pattern. These will be free at marleybird.com forever. So you don't have to have anything else other than your needles and your yarn, these videos and the free pattern. I know some of you who really like to have everything all nice and tidy in one little place. So we have also provided an ad free PDF available for purchase. Again, you can find the link to purchase the ad free PDF in that blog post. Okay, now that we know where to find that free pattern, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about this video. It is important that you watch this video all the way through first before you start knitting and following along with me. There's a lot of information that is provided in this video and I wanna make sure you're absorbing the information, not only just doing what I'm telling you to do, but I want you to understand why you're doing it. This will help you become a better knitter and you will be able to take that knowledge and apply it to future knitting projects, okay? So promise me that you will watch this video all the way through first, absorb all the information I'm giving you, and then grab your homework, hit rewind, and tackle everything along with me. For those of you who are like, okay, I've watched the video all the way through once, but the second time, I really just wanna jump to the sections because I understand what you're saying, Marley. Perfect. I've put timestamps in the video description box below for each section that you would need to just jump to to follow along with the pattern itself, okay? But for your first time viewing, promise me, you will watch the video all the way through. Got it? All right, I, I, I know that you're gonna do that. So before we jump into the pattern, why don't we take a look at some socks and understand what it is we will be doing in this video. Down here you can see I have three different samples of socks happening here. You guys saw this one in video one, but since then I have finished these. Okay, well this one's not entirely done, but I've worked on some others. We are going to be working on German short row heels today, and a short row heel is just that. It's a series of rows that are worked shorter, one on top of the other, to create a wedge. Once you have that wedge created, you then work two rows even to pick up all the, what would be wraps, but we're gonna do German short rows, so they will be double stitches. And then you work another wedge on top of that. Now it is possible to work double stitches on top of double stitches where you don't have those two rows to pick up stitches, so to speak. In my opinion though, it's not as pretty. So in this pattern, I have designed it to where you have those two center rows to pick up those double stitches. I think it makes for a better fitting heel and it just looks so much better. You don't get all of the holes that um, I see that happen when you are stacking German short rows on top of German short rows, okay? So I'm putting that out there because I know there are videos out here on YouTube of people who have showed how to do stacking German short rows on top of each other. And the thing is, yes, it can be done. I just think this looks better, which is why I'm teaching it in this video today, okay? As you create these wedges of fabric, the distance from where you left off at the end of video one to the center portion of your short row heel, okay? So this would be the first part of your wedge of the short row. This distance here should equal the same distance that I told you in the pattern to leave your foot portion short. Meaning, if you had a 10 inch foot and I said, hey, leave or work your foot up to where it measures two inches shorter than your desired 
10 inches. You worked your toe and your foot up eight inches. That final two inches is made up by this wedge portion here, okay? So as we work the German short row heel, or a short row heel for that matter, this first portion, as we're working toe up, determines how much extra length you get on your full foot of the sock. Does that make sense? For me, I did not understand that when I first started making short row heels on socks, and I ended up making socks that were too big all the time, because my foot itself, I do have a, a 10 inch foot, right? And I would be like, oh man, eight inches just doesn't seem enough, and I would go a little bit further, and then by the time I was done with my short row heel, my sock no longer fit. So I think it's important for you to understand that that first portion, this first portion of your short row heel, this first wedge that we're going to create, that's the portion that makes up the amount that we're leaving our sock short after we complete the first um, set of instructions. Does that make sense? Okay. Once we finish this first wedge, then we will carry on to the rest. But for this first wedge, I'm going to take this off and let's take a look at it a little bit more here. You can see it essentially creates a pocket for the heel. Can you see that? Just creates a nice pocket for your heel to fold into. And if you did not know this was a heel and I just had this sitting here just like this, you might think that that was a toe of a sock. Because ironically, if you are working German short rows for a heel, you can do the same thing for the toe of a sock as well. But that's a whole nother set of instructions. But it's important to kind of file that away of, okay, I'm learning how to do German short rows for a heel here. When I get to a pattern that calls for German short rows for the toe, I might be able to apply some of the instructions Marley's teaching me here to that toe. See what I mean? When we create the heel, we are working this first wedge, this first portion of the heel right here. And you will notice that the double stitches or the German short rows right here and right here, they do not go all the way across the sock. There is a portion of the sock that is left free of any sort of double stitch. Okay, can you see that? It's right there. It's all just left in stockinette. That is considered your final heel stitches. And if you were to take your total heel stitch count, which traditionally is half the number of stitches you cast on. So for easy numbers here, if you cast on 60, you would take 30 of those stitches for your total heel stitch count. And then traditionally, your final heel stitch count is one third of what your total is. So if we had 60 to start, we take 30 for our heel stitches, and we would take that 30, divide it by three, which would give us 10 stitches for our final heel stitch count. So that final heel stitch count is this sort of no man's zone right here on the back of the heel. And just like anything else, that is customizable. So the, the like one third portion, you can make that a little bit bigger, a little bit narrower to custom fit your socks. But the rule of thumb is about a third of your stitches are the center stitches. All the stitches on the outside of that center, those are what you are using your German short row double stitches on, okay? Okay, that gives you a brief explanation of what it is we're going to begin to do. Let's go ahead, pull in our homework, and take a look at where we left off. I've worked up a little swatch here with 40 stitches on it. And so you can see I have the toe complete, I did the increases, and then I have a small little foot. I have already worked across my instep stitches right here. So the instep, that's the top of your foot. And I have the needle two or the sole stitches on my needle, okay? So I have magic loop happening right here. If I had two circulars, I would have my instep stitches on one circular and I would have my sole stitches on the second circular. If you're working on nine inch circulars, I am going to suggest that you treat your nine inch circulars just like two circulars, meaning use the long needle that you used for your Judy's uh, Magic Cast On Toe and put your heel stitches on that needle and let your instep stitches rest on your nine inch circular, okay? 
Can you do this type of heel with the nine inch circulars? Yes, I find it cumbersome though. And if this is your first pair of socks, the last thing I want you to do is to find any sort of difficulty in doing this. So transferring those sole stitches to another needle and keeping the insept stitches separate will make things so much easier. Just trust me on this. So go ahead and position your needles in that way. At the end of last week's instructions, I also mentioned adding a marker to the bottom of your socks. So you have a point to measure your second sock to. And I suggested adding a lifeline to your stitches. A lifeline is a very handy thing to add in and it's super simple to do. And the reason you wanna do that is say this is your first sock and you start doing the short row heel and it's really not going well you wanna be able to rip out that short row heel and get back to a starting point without ruining all the work you've already put into this sock. If you need help adding a, a lifeline, I've put a link right there, that little I button, and I've also provided a link in the pattern itself. So all you need to do is click that and it will take you to a video showing you three different ways to do a lifeline. For this week's instructions, this is where we need to begin. We have our sole stitches on the needle, our inset stitches are on a cord, whether it's on the cord for the magic loop or the cord for nine inch circulars or a second circular needle, okay? We've worked through the inset stitches, which means our yarn is coming from our back needle and our front needle right here. This is our needle too, and we're gonna be working on this. We are working in actual rows. These are short rows, not short rounds. So we are not going to engage needle one until we get to that center portion of the short row. And we will do that by using wrap and turns into this first stitch right here on needle one and this last stitch here on needle one. And the reason I'm doing that is to help prevent holes at these joins from the heel to the instep, okay? So it's a big tip, you don't wanna miss that. But let's go ahead, Right now, we're going to jump in with the first set of instructions for the German short row heel for the My First Knit Toe Up Socks. Are you ready? For this German short row heel, I will be working across needle two for the first half. I've also changed colors so you can better see the stitches I will be creating. I wanna point out, you should be using the numbers that pertain to the size you are making. So be sure to have that pattern and follow along with your numbers. Don't just do the numbers I'm using here in the video. These ones pertain to my little swatch right here, okay? You'll notice that there is a set of numbers that tell you to knit to a certain point and then add a marker. For me, I need to knit seven, so I'm gonna go ahead and knit seven stitches. So two, four, six, and then seven. Once I reach that first set, I'm going to add a marker, okay? Now, my instructions say to knit six. And then I'm supposed to add another marker. Then I'm supposed to knit another seven stitches, or essentially to the end of my needle. What we've done here is we have placed markers to single out the center stitches of our heel. So this will be our final heel stitch count right here, and none of the German short rows will be worked between these, these markers. They're all worked on the outside. Now with this first row, you might be like, okay, so we've just knit one row. But in reality, we are getting ready to do a German short row in that last stitch that we knit. Typically, this last stitch would have been a wrap and turn if we were doing wrap and turn short rows. But with the German short row, we actually knit that last stitch. We are going to turn our work so that the wrong side is facing us. And this is a German short row. This is the important part, okay? My yarn is in front. I will take my needle and go into that stitch and slide it off. And then I wanna take my yarn up over top of my right hand needle to where it pulls that purl bump all the way up towards that front, okay? That creates a double stitch. So see how it looks like it's two stitches there? Some of you who were beginner knitters might have been like, oh, that looks familiar. I used to do that on accident. Well, this time we're doing it on purpose. Once you've pulled that back, 
Because we're doing a purl, we now wanna take our yarn and bring it between our needles back to the front so that we can purl across this row. And it will leave that double stitch right there. Can you see it? You wanna make sure that you keep your yarn tension nice and snug here. You want that double stitch and the yarn itself to be nice and snug, okay? You don't want it loosey-goosey or you will get holes in your heel and we don't want that. Once you do that German short row there on that first one, we're simply going to purl across all of our stitches to the end of our row, okay? In the pattern itself, it gives you the exact number of stitches to purl across, but basically you'll notice it's just knit to the end of this needle, okay? When you get to those markers, just slip them over. Nothing fancy you have to do, just slip them and carry on. Okay, again, you wanna make sure every time you do these German short rows and the stitches after, you keep them nice and snug, okay? So here we are, we're coming up to this last stitch. This would typically have been my wrapped stitch if I was doing a wrap and turn, but because I'm doing a German short row, I go ahead and purl it, I turn my work, and this is where a German short row for the right side looks different, okay? You want your yarn to the front, just as if I was going to purl this. I'm gonna go into that last stitch that I purled and slip it off. And now bring my yarn to the back, just like I did before, okay? See, there's my double stitch right there. It looks a little goofy because I, I did change colors, but there's my double stitch. Because the next stitch I'm going to be creating is a knit, I don't have to bring my yarn back forward, right? Because I, I need it in back to knit. So I go ahead and I knit my next stitch and I do, again, make sure that's nice and snug. But you can see right there, I have that double stitch. Now, you'll notice that the instructions say to go ahead and knit down to one stitch before the previous double stitch. Great, we don't really have to think about any sort of number at this point, which is convenient, because if we're coming home from a long day at school or a long day at work or a long day with the family, sometimes you don't wanna count. You just wanna be able to look at your knitting and read it. So that makes this really convenient because we are just going to work all the way down to that stitch just before the double stitch and we will create another German short row. So there's my double stitch. Here's the stitch I wanna just knit into. That's going to be my new German short row. So as I turn my work, my yarn is in front. I go into that stitch, slip it off, take my yarn, go up over top, and just give it a pull. See how I get that double stitch? I then wanna bring my yarn, I like to rest my hand on that so it doesn't go anywhere. Bring my yarn back between my needles to the front, and I will purl across. Okay, I think the reason I like to do this particular heel with the longer needle instead of like the nine inch circular is I don't feel like I can get that tension really nice and snug with the circular needle when I'm purling. So using the longer needles really helps me get that tension. I know that there are gonna be some of you out there that can do it with the nine inch circular without any problem. And you know what, to that I say just, oops, I say go for it. You can absolutely do it. I am not that dex dexterous, would that be the word? I'm not real sure. Anyways, this set of the instructions on the wrong side say that you will purl all the way down to one stitch before your double stitch. So there's my double stitch. I purl that last one, turn my work, and I do another German short row. So my, I'm on the right side, bring my yarn forward, go into that stitch and slip it bring my yarn up over top of my needle and give it a pull so that I get that funny looking double stitch and then knit all the way down to the stitch just before the double stitch at this end. And you keep doing this back and forth, back and forth for the number of times listed in the pattern or once again, if you just wanna read your knitting, you're gonna do it back and forth until all of the stitches on the outside of your markers have that double stitch, pretty easy. So you could just go until all of these stitches on the outside of your marker have that double stitch. There's one double stitch, there's another double stitch. This is the last one. Turn, 
and do my German short row. Slip it, bring my yarn up over top, get that double stitch, bring my yarn back between my needles to the front, and then purl. Now, typically this is where I would end the video and then just breeze forward to the point that I need it to be in, but I know there are some of you who are very interested on how this is done, and you like to just see me work through all of these. So I'm gonna just let the video go as I continue on creating these short rows. Make sure your yarn is forward. Slip it, bring my yarn to the back, and get that double stitch.
So this will be my last double stitch outside of that marker. And it's created, obviously, once I turn my work, slip it, create my double stitch, come back forward, then I can slip my marker and then work across my center stitches here. And this would be essentially what would be your last row of the first half of your heel, okay? And you get to the next marker, slip it, and you purl that last stitch before the double stitch and turn. And so in the instructions, this says, oh, this is where you're ending. But I need you to remember that this stitch right here will be a German short row, okay? So I need to make it a double stitch. So I bring it forward, slip it, and then bring it back, okay? So this is essentially the first stitch of the next section, okay? Now, I wanna go back and I wanna address a couple things of what we've just done. First, we've worked every single stitch on the outside of those center markers as double stitches, okay? Those double stitches replace what would typically be called a wrap and turn, okay? So that's what we have done here with the German short row. We've also created a nice little wedge of fabric, and this is the wedge of fabric I was mentioning to you that makes up the distance that you made your foot short of your total foot length. So if this was four inches and I needed five inches, I just made up that extra inch right here with this wedge of fabric. Does that make sense? If you ever need to calculate how big the wedge of fabric you're gonna be creating is, count the number of stitches you have on the outside of your markers, and the number of stitches you have on the outside of your markers equals the number of rows you're gonna do. Then all you need to do from there is get what your row gauge is to the inch and calculate that with the number of rows you have. And that will give you the number of, um, or the measurement of this particular wedge of fabric. And that will help you if you're custom fitting socks for somebody else, you know how short your uh, socks need to be or how long your socks need to be. And this part, how big it's gonna be to make up that total length. Hopefully that makes sense to you. But that's what we've done right here. We've created short rows to get a wedge of fabric that makes up the final portion of the bottom of our foot, okay? The bottom of our sock. Now what we are gonna do is we are going to work across stitches and work into each of these double stitches and then come back to work into all of these double stitches. That actually creates two center rows. And these two center rows, in my opinion, are very important. It makes it so that we are not stacking one wedge on top of the other wedge without sort of like a relief section. Without the relief section, I feel like the double stitches, one on top of the other, they just don't look as good and they kind of create little holes in the heel of your sock. Now, can it be done? Absolutely. Are there videos out there showing it done that way? Absolutely, but in my opinion, it is better to do it in the manner I'm getting ready to show you because it just makes it for a better heel of a sock. I'm also going to show you a little trick that I do in order to prevent holes at the join from where I do this heel and when we start incorporating our instep stitches, okay? So by this point, your socks should look a little something like this. And in the instructions, we're getting to do what I called the pickup row or the center of the short rows, okay? So this is where we are. This last stitch that I just did, that would be stitch number one of this next row, okay? So this is row one. We've already done the German short row for the right side, and now I continue on with the instructions. It says I'm supposed to knit over to the double stitch, so I will go ahead and I'm gonna knit over to my double stitch. Slip my marker, here's my double stitch. Can you see it there? It looks like two stitches on my needle. I want to knit the two strands of my double stitch together and treat it as one stitch. So all I'm gonna do, literally, I just go underneath both of those strands, just like that, okay? See that again? Just gonna go underneath those strands, just like I'm knitting, and knit the two strands, so to speak, together. And that creates one stitch. And I wanna do that all the way down to the end of this needle, 
okay? Try not to split your yarn. Just knit the two strands together. As you come to the double stitch, knit those two strands together. It seems too easy, and if it seems like it's too easy, you're doing it right. <laughs> like that's, that's really how easy these short rows are. They are super duper easy. And I'm gonna do it all the way down to the end of needle two. So no matter how many stitches you have, just do it all the way down to the end of needle two. And then you have now completed essentially one little portion of the center, um, the center short rows. But we're not done. We're gonna do one extra little step that I do to help prevent holes, okay? So if you wanna skip this step, you can, but this is what I do, all right? So follow along with me. This is really not complicated. What we are going to do is we wanna come over here and we wanna do a wrap and turn on this first stitch right here on the end step. So I'm going to rotate my work just like I've been doing all along when I was working the foot. I wanna get my needles back into a starting position. So I'm gonna pull my instep stitches onto a needle, whether it's the other half of my magic loop or my second circular or whatever it may be. I'm gonna take the heel stitches and put those on a cord. All right, so it's just as if I was getting ready to rotate around, okay? But I'm not gonna do a full round. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my yarn, come in front of my needle, go tip to tip, so tip to tip, I'm gonna slip my stitch as if to purl off, bring my yarn back between my needles, back to the back. See how that wraps that yarn around that, that stitch? And now I wanna bring that stitch back onto that needle. And that's it, that's all we're gonna do with that stitch. Now that it's back onto that needle, we get our needles back into a starting position, go ahead and take the instep stitches and put those back on the cord so now we're looking at the wrong side of our heel okay so see we never went all the way around we essentially just turned now here's what we want to do this yarn now is essentially trapped around that stitch so as we purl this first stitch here I want to make sure that we're pulling that yarn that's wrapped around that stitch really snug as I purl and pull that off I wanna pull that nice and snug. So when I come back and I pick up that wrap and knit it with this stitch, it's gonna be invisible and it's gonna close up that little tiny hole that gets created, all right? That's really, it's gonna be that easy. Once we purl that first stitch, we're going to purl all the way down to we get until we get to our first double stitch. So this would be what would be the row two of our center short row heel. Okay, so this is row two of the center short row heel instructions. I'm just purling across all those stitches I just worked into. And I'm essentially going back over here to the other side of my heel where the other double stitches are. And I'm going to work them together. All right, so my, my stitch marker seems to get, okay, there we go. I can move my stitch marker out of the way. Okay. So I'm over here, here are my double stitches, and just like before, I wanna purl this time into both double stitches. So last time I was knitting through both of the legs, this time I'm going to purl. And I just do that all the way down the row. I go through both legs of the double stitch, and I purl it. Both legs of the double stitch, and I purl it. And I'm gonna do this all the way down. And this will be, as I mentioned, row two of the center of the short row heel. And then just like on the opposite side, we want to do a wrap and turn over here with this stitch, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my work and I'm gonna get my instep stitches on the needle, let me tuck away. Those are my little ends from changing colors. I don't want you to com get confused with those. I'm gonna go ahead, put these on the needle, and I'm gonna put these on the cord. Now here's what I wanna do here. For this one, I'm gonna bring my yarn to the back, slip this stitch, bring my yarn forward, and put that stitch back on. 
okay? And that's it. Put those back to the cord, put our heel stitches back to the needle, and we are gonna carry on. Okay, so we're gonna pause here for a second because I know some of you are probably a little bit confused, but let's take a look at what we just did. This is the top of my sock, and I essentially just took my working yarn and I wrapped it around the last stitch on the top of my sock, and I did that previously on the last stitch on the top of my sock over here at this end. Now that I've done that, I've essentially positioned my yarn in a way that I'm not gonna get holes there at those joins, and now I can carry on with the second half of my short row heel. So we've created this first wedge, which is great. Look at that, you see that little wedge? That's beautiful, and that uh, gives us our full length of our foot, which is awesome. But now we need to create a second wedge right up here to make it so that our sock can start going vertical. On this second wedge, we will be working short row heels instead of going from the last stitch to the last stitch and then one in and then one in and then one in and one in, we're gonna go in reverse. So we're gonna go the first stitch outside of the marker, the first stitch outside of the marker. And then we'll work back, we'll work into that double stitch and then one stitch past the double stitch. And then we'll work back and work into that double stitch and then one stitch past that double stitch. This will create the opposite direction of the wedge. It's really not that hard. The instructions are written out in the pattern, so as long as you have those in front of you and methodically work through these stitches, you will get it. All right, so let's do this together. This is the second half of the short row heel. I have the right side of the fabric facing me, and I'm ready to continue. This very first stitch I work here, I wanna make sure I'm pulling again this yarn nice and snug to make that wrap around that green one there nice and tight. So the instructions say to go ahead and it gives you a number of stitches to knit across. For me, I have to knit seven. I'm gonna slip the marker. Then I have to knit across six. Again, you need to follow along with the numbers that pertain to the size you are making. And now I'm gonna remove this marker. Okay, because I'm not gonna need it anymore. I will be removing that one here in a minute. Once I remove that marker, I now knit one stitch. And that's gonna be my first German short row. So as I turn my work, I have the wrong side facing me, I create the German short row. So my yarn's forward, slip the stitch, bring the yarn up and over top, get that double stitch, bring my yarn back between my needles to the front, so that now, I essentially am purling to that next marker. The exact number of stitches is written in the pattern. I will remove this marker. I don't need it anymore either. Maybe, <laughs> it doesn't wanna go. And then I will purl this next stitch. And that stitch right there I just purled will become the German short row as I turn. So I turn, I'm on the right side bring my yarn forward, slip the stitch, bring my yarn up over top of my right hand needle to create that double stitch. And now I'm going to knit over to my double stitch. When I get to the double stitch, I'm going to knit it. Just knit those two strands of the double stitch together, just like we did before and then knit one stitch past the double stitch. This one stitch past is now gonna become the new German short row stitch, the double stitch. So as I turn, I slip it, bring my yarn up over top to create the double stitch, bring my yarn back between my needles to the front because I'm going to purl this time. So now I purl across to the double stitch and then I will purl the two strands of the double stitch together. Okay, you with me so far? So I'm gonna purl the two strands of my double stitch, here it is, and then purl one stitch after. And that one stitch after, when I turn, becomes the new double stitch, right? Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing this until all of the stitches 
have been worked. Okay, so I did a double stitch. Now I knit down to the double stitch at the other end. Here it is. You should be able to find it pretty easily. Knit those two strands of the double stitch together and then knit one stitch after. Turn and repeat. I'm going to do this just like I did last time. I'm going to do it all the way down so you can see how this has worked the whole way. I'm not going to skip any steps here. I think it's important when we're doing a sock along like this you can see how it's all done. So I'm going all the way down to where the double stitch is again. When I get there, I will purl the two strands together. Okay, there's my, my double stitch. I'm going to purl the two strands together. And then purl one stitch after. Turn my work. Bring my yarn forward. Slip that stitch. Bring my yarn up over top to create that double stitch and repeat. So I'm going to go down again to the double stitch. There it is. I knit the two strands together and knit one past it. Turn. There's my double stitch. I'm going to purl it together. Purl one stitch after. And turn. You notice every time you turn, you have fewer stitches on the outside here that haven't been worked. So we're eating those up each, each time we do these turns. Don't forget to create that double stitch every time you do that turn. Even on the very last one we do, we're going to create that double stitch. It'll be the last double stitch that we create. You'll see when we get to it. And this does take a little bit of time. So on your sock, if you have more stitches, obviously, it's going to take more time than on my little tiny sock here. But I'm telling you, this is so worth it. All right, so slip double stitch. Make sure that's nice and tight. Always want to make sure that double stitch is really nice and snug as you transition to that purl especially. Okay, don't let it get extra slack there or you will get a hole. coming down here to this next double stitch. I'm nearly done. Hopefully this is like becoming very clear what we're doing here. Turn. Bring my yarn forward. Create my double stitch. Carry on. It's really quite satisfying to see this heel begin to take shape as you're creating all of these wraps and turns or German short rows, the double stitches, as you're creating a pocket for your heel to fit into. Just a couple more to go here. Again, don't forget to make that purl one nice and snug. You don't want to get holes. A hole in your sock is not only unsightly, but it makes it so that the sock does not wear as evenly. The tighter your stitches are, the less rub the stitches have on one another, and so you'll get a longer wear out of your sock. For those of you who are wondering why you don't want holes, that is why. I'm going to 
and curl these two together. Curl one. All right, these are my last two rows. Woo! So close. <laughs> and create that double stitch. I'm trying to go a little bit slow here. I usually knit faster, but I don't want to lose you guys. And hopefully you find this really helpful to see me go through all of these stitches and not just fast forward through this section. Okay, so I'm coming down here, doing this double stitch here, and then I knit one more, which is the last stitch, okay? That's the last stitch of my needle too. So when I turn my work on this next row, which would be, this would be a row four, right? This would be a row four. I will slip this stitch and create my double stitch, just like before. So that last stitch I did on needle two, it still becomes a double stitch before I jump into purling this row. Okay. When I get to the end here, I will have one more stitch again. Just like before, oop, I have a little, it's not a knot, I've created like it's cinched in on itself, there you go. <laughs> when I get to the end here, I'll have the same thing where I have one stitch left at the end of this needle and I'll have that double stitch created on the next row. And this next row is essentially, it's the final row before we begin working in the round again. So here's my double stitch purl those together. Here's my last stitch, I purl it. So as I turn my work in the pattern, if you're following along, this would be what would be called the next row. So once you've completed all of your rows of the second half of your short row heel, this is what would be called the next row. This stitch here still has to become a double stitch. So I wanna do the German short row on that stitch. There we are, okay, so I have the German short row. Now, as I knit down this row, I am setting off to begin my in the round. I'm completing this row and this completes my heel. But I'm not done yet because I, I need to handle those wraps and turns that I did over here, right? So we're gonna see how we handle those. But when I come down here all the way to the end, I'll have one double stitch to deal with. So I work my double stitch and I do not turn. And you might be like, well, Marley, you have one more double stitch down here. You're right, I absolutely do. And when I come back around, I will work that double stitch. But at this point, my heel itself is complete. Can you see? So that's the second half of the heel. There's the first half of the heel. Here are our beautiful German short rows. Look how pretty those are. I mean, you cannot tell me that those don't look spectacular with that little center section here that divided up the German short rows. Like, it looks so good. It looks so good right there. Isn't that great? And so that way you can see a difference. On this sock here, you guys, I stacked my German short rows. All right, I want you to see the difference here. Can you see? Let's see here if I can get my hand in here appropriately. Can you see how these ones, they have a little bit more gap? They kind of have a little bit more of a hole there. You can actually like, see my fingernail through them. You see that? Whereas these ones, they are really snug and tight together. And these were done on the same needle. These are both done using German short rows. The gray ones are German short rows stacked on top of German short rows, which is absolutely possible. You can see that. The green one is the German short rows with the two center short row sections um, that I showed you, those two extra rows that we do to kind of pick up those double stitches. Can you see that? All right, so that's the difference between the two. And that's it, so look at that. I mean, that's where your foot would work into it. So far, so good. I know that we just went over a lot of information the good news though is that it's a lot of repetitive action. You knit down, you work your last stitch, turn, do a German short row, 
purl down, work at the last stitch, turn, do a German short row. It's pretty easy stuff. Then you get to the center section. That's where you actually are working into those double stitches to kind of, I'm gonna, I call it like, in my mind, I think of it as I'm cleaning up. I'm cleaning the palette. I'm making it so I'm back to everything's just regular stitches. And then I build my second half of my German short row heel or the second half of my wedge on top of that sort of clean palette. And this is the result. This is what we get. I also showed you how to do those wrap and turns right here. Can you see how that wrap and turn is right around the throat of that stitch? And it's right around the throat of this stitch. And those wrap and turns are not mandatory. If you want to skip that step, you absolutely can. I find them very helpful though in preventing the hole that happens typically at that join point, okay? So here's how we handle those wrap and turns. That's how we're gonna pick them up and get started to uh, get our work ready to work in the round. <laughs> you can do this. Okay, so this is where I left off and this is where I would rotate my work, right? I'm not turning, because I'm not turning anymore to where I'm working back and forth in rows. I'm gonna continue to just keep the right side of my sock facing me. So once I rotate my work, I wanna get my needles back into my starting position, just like we did when we were working the foot of the sock. I will take the heel stitches now and put them on the cord. So now I'm just working with what would be needle one. Can you see that? If you're working with two circulars, you just get the second circular into position. If you're working with a nine inch circular, get your nine inch circular into position, okay? Once we do this, this is what we are going to do. I'm going to maintain, I, this is, I typically would cut this off and I would join in with that color again, but I want you to see, actually, you know what, I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut this and I'm going to join back to the other color because that will help you see what I'm doing, I think. We're going to, we're going to try this out, okay? And I like to tie it on just so that it stays in place. All right, so. See if we can tuck those out of the way. Okay, here we go. We're working across the instep. The instep stitches are what we want to work across. We have our wrap and turn right here. And luckily, because it's two different colors, this will be easy to see. What we want to do is we want to go into that wrap. Okay, so you just go into the wrap just like you were going to knit it and then swivel around and go into the actual stitch, okay? And knit them together. So yarn over, and you're gonna pull that yarn over through the stitch and through the wrap. Can you see that? So when I do that and I pop it off, it hides that wrap to the back, <laughs> if it wasn't changing colors, and then you just carry on. So I would slip my marker, because that's the, the start of my round marker, and I carry on and work across my instep. If the instep of my sock were a pattern, this is where um, you might jump into a pattern if you had a pattern going up your foot of the, of the sock itself. Um, typically, if you're working a pattern on the leg, it's, it happens after like a couple rows past the join of the heel and the instep back into the round. Um, but you knit across these instep stitches until you get to this side. Remember this side is where I have another wrap and turn over here. So over here, I have a wrap right here. Is that where I, yeah, I'm gonna pull, that's where I changed colors again so it looks goofy. There it is, okay. So there's my wrap. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into my wrap and then I'm gonna take this stitch, go into it, but then slip it off. And then I'm gonna take my left hand needle here and I'm going to go into the front leg of those two stitches. So it's very similar to an SSK. And as I do that, that will kick everything into place and it puts the wrap where it's supposed to be. Okay, can you see that? All right. Now, once again, I rotate my work, get my needles back into a starting position I have all these extra strings here I don't like. <laughs> I don't want all these strings. I gotta get this back on here because when I get back into my starting position and I work across my heel, 
Remember, this first stitch over here on our heel is a double stitch, okay? So I'm back in my starting position, move the instep stitches to the cord, and I carry on working across my heel. But remember, this first stitch here is was the last uh, German short row we did. So you wanna make sure you knit those two legs of the German short row together. Okay, and then you just carry on. That's it. That is all you need to do. And once you've done that, on your sock pattern where you haven't changed colors, like maybe you didn't change colors on yours, um, your, your join at this point should look really great. Even if you did change colors, your join is looking uh, pretty spectacular. And if you need to tidy up anything, that you possibly might have, you can use your extra yarn you have to do what's called like a duplicate stitch. You know, just weave in your ends and do like a duplicate stitch. But let's take a look here. My little tiny sample here. You can see my join looks really great. You see that? Let's look at the other side. See my join? My join looks pretty awesome. Looks pretty awesome down there. And you can see it also, I'm gonna bring in another one. This is actual sock yarns. This is the weight you're using. Here are my German short rows. Look how great they look. And there is no hole. There is no hole whatsoever on either side. Everything looks great. All right, now you know how to do a German short row heel. It isn't too scary, right? It's a lot of repetitive action, but you can see now how the two wedges come together to create something spectacular. Now that we know how to do the German short row heel, I want to talk to those of you out there who might have a larger instep or your heel diagonal is a little bit larger than average. As we created this sock from the toe up, we are not creating gusset stitches here to create more stitches to allow for a larger circumference. We are really relying on the depth of our short row heel to give us the appropriate circumference measurement. One thing you can do to make sure that your sock is going to actually fit you is calculate how large that heel diagonal is supposed to be on the sock pattern as it's written compared to what your heel diagonal should be for your particular sock. If you find that you need more stitches than the pattern has, there is a very simple worksheet available for you to work through. Here's what I've created for you. It's a worksheet for a short row heel customization, and the link to this worksheet is provided in your pattern. This worksheet will walk you through the math of your actual sock and your desired sock measurements. You can work through this worksheet to find out if you really do need to make any customizations or maybe yours is gonna fit just fine as written. Let's go ahead and work through this worksheet together so you can see how it works. How many times can I say work? <laughs> okay. For our actual sock, we have a stitch per inch of eight stitches and our rows per inch is 10.5. Now that's what's written in this particular pattern. One thing you can do is take the actual stitch gauge and row gauge of your sock as you're working on it right now, because maybe you've made yours a little bit smaller or a little bit larger. It's best to have the numbers pertain to the sock that you're actually working on, okay? So fill in your numbers right here. Over here, these are your own personal foot measurements or the person you're making your sock for. So the ball of my foot is 9.5 inches. The length of my foot is 10 inches and my heel diagonal is 13.5 inches. And remember the heel diagonal, that is from the heel to the top of your foot. So it's that portion right there, okay? Now, right here, sock circumference. This is your desired sock circumference. And what this basically means is when you're choosing your sock pattern, you usually want it to fit more snug than what your actual sock or what your actual foot circumference is. So you want it typically like a half an inch smaller. So if you were to take your foot measurement, your the ball of your foot, right? So my 9.5 
and multiply that by 0.95. So I'm going to say 9.5 times 0.95 equals. So my desired sock measurement would be 9.05. What I can do with this information is when I'm looking at my sock pattern, I want to choose a size that's close to 9 inches, okay? If the sock pattern isn't 9 inches, maybe it's 9 and a half and 8 and a half, you have a decision to make. Do you want yours to fit just kind of loose and select the nine and a half or go ahead and go down to eight and a half? For me, I always go down to the eight and a half knowing that I can customize my heel if I need to have that extra room for my heel diagonal because I want my sock to fit more snug versus loose. I hate a loose sock. So that's what this information is. This right here, you'll notice it says for toe up and it says the length of foot in inches before the short row heel. And this basically lets you know that final number that we use at the end of video one when it says work your foot until it measures X number of stitch or X number of inches shorter than your total foot length. So with my foot length being 10 inches, I need to know essentially what the first half of my short row section is going to measure before I can figure out how long I need to make my sock, right? Because it's gonna be 10 inches minus whatever this is. So I can fill this in after I finish my entire worksheet, but that information is right there and it walks you through over here what to do. But essentially, you'll take your 10 inches and then once you figure out how large that first half of your short row heel is, you'll subtract this from your 10 and that will give you how big your foot should be before you start your heel. Make sense so far? All right, so we're gonna go on to page two real quick. And heel diagonal. So this is your actual um, desired sock measurement uh, heel diagonal. So for this, you're gonna multiply your heel diagonal. So for me, it was 13.5. So I will multiply 13.5 times 0.8, times 0.8. So I have a 10.8 eight desired heel diagonal, that's 10.8 inches, okay? Here's a note, it says this measurement is traditionally 20% negative ease. So that's why you're multiplying it by 0.8. It's giving you a 20% negative ease because you don't want your sock to fall down around your heel, so you want it a little bit snug there. That's why you multiply it by 20% um, negative ease. That's why you don't make your heel diagonal exactly what your, your real heel diagonal is. You want it a little bit smaller. So I know that if my actual sock heel diagonal is more than 10.8, I don't really need to make much of an adjustment unless it's a significant amount. But if it's a lot less than 10.8, I'll wanna make some adjustments. All right, so that's what we have to do now. Now we take our actual sock pattern and we figure out the details to that. So the finished sock circumference, this is the one where you decided what to do. So remember up here, I mentioned that I need a nine inch sock circumference. So that's inch cir sock circumference, but maybe circumference, <laughs> but maybe my sock pattern only comes in eight and a half or nine and a half. I need to decide which one I want to do. So I can write that information in, in here. So let's say I go with the eight and a half just because. But if you don't know what this would be, you can divide the total number of stitches in your sock pattern that you're using and um, divide that by your stitch gauge and that will give you your circumference for the sock you're actually creating, okay? The heel diagonal, that's a measurement that I have literally never seen on an actual sock pattern. So we have to um, mathematically guesstimate what the heel diagonal will be based on the pattern we're creating. So on this particular one, what we would do, so let's say this was worked up eight and a half inches, uh, circumference all the way around, but I don't know what this heel diagonal is gonna be. And so in order to kind of guess at how much it's going to be, what I wanna do, I wanna multiply my finished sock circumference, so 8.5, so let's take 8.5, and I wanna multiply that by 1.3, so times 1.3, and that gives me 11.05 inches. Now, why do I multiply that by 
That's because the heel diagonal circumference is usually about 30 to 40% larger than the finished sock circumference, okay? And that's based on the book by Kate Atherley called Custom Socks. She did some research and she found that the average overall is um, the 30% or 40% larger than the foot circumference. For me, I like to always round to the lower percentage of that total. That's why I chose 1.3, okay? So right here, I know that 11.5 inches is an inch larger roughly it's not even an inch it's less than an inch larger than my desired heel diagonal but it is still smaller than my actual heel diagonal which means that on this particular pattern I wouldn't have to make any adjustments but just for argument's sake let's just pretend that this was not that way let's pretend Let's say that this came out to eight inches, okay? Eight inches for some reason. And I'm gonna erase this so that you just don't get confused. We're gonna pretend, I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know what that is. Let's just leave that be. Let's pretend that this heel diagonal would have been eight inches. Well, that heel diagonal at eight inches, when we want 10.8, and, <clears throat> and our actual is 13.5, is gonna make it so that our sock does not fit. So that's where we would continue on and make adjustments, okay? So that's, let's keep doing that here. So right here it says the total heel stitches. What we wanna do is we wanna divide the total number of stitches of the sock by two. Essentially, here's what we're doing. Remember when I mentioned that traditionally the sock itself will have half the number of stitches on the instep and the other half of the stitches for the heel that's what you're figuring out. So you're just making sure that we're only dealing with the heel stitches of your sock. So let's say this sock was 40 stitches and here, we'll just use this as an example. It's 40 stitches, we divided it, so we have 20 stitches for our heel, okay? We'll just do that. Final heel stitches. It says divide the total heel stitches, which would be this, of the sock by three. Remember I mentioned that your heel stitches here, sort of this no man's zone, is about a third of the total of your sock heel. All right, so that's where we're multiplying that by 0.3. So if we were to take 20 times, uh, or not times, I'm sorry, we're gonna take 20 divided by three equals 6.6. .6. So that equals 6.66. .66. Well, we can't do like a point, right? And we know that we want to round to the nearest even number. So if we round down to where the center stitches are 6, then we know that if we were to take 20 minus 6, that leaves us with 14 stitches to do our German short rows on, right? And then we would take that 14, just future, and we would divide that by 2 so that we have 7 on either side which is what I did in the video. Does this make sense? So this is actually that number six is our final heel stitch count of the actual sock. Um, typically this information would be given to you in your sock pattern. You don't have to figure this out, but I wanted to show you how you get those numbers if you needed to figure it out for future patterns. But usually it will tell you how many stitches you're just leaving empty there in the center of the heel of your sock, okay? Let's go ahead and move on to page three. And this is where we're going to figure out exactly how wide our final heel stitches are. And the only reason to do, to do this would be if you have a wider heel and you don't want your heels to be as pointy, maybe you know that you need two and a half inches for your heel, that, that no man's zone of your heel. This is where you can figure out on your pattern exactly how wide that no man's zone is on the pattern as written, and you can decide if you need to make adjustments. So right here, we take the final heel stitches, so that for us, that's the six right here. So we would take six, and we would divide that by our stitch gauge. So we would take six divided by our stitch gauge, which was eight, okay? So we take six divided by eight, 0.75. So for our example, this no man's zone right here is less than an inch, okay? Obviously, these, this is like a really small sock. Typically, that would be anywhere from an inch to two inches. It all depends on the size you're making. But now you know how to get that information, okay? All right. So we have now gathered information to help us decide 
what we need to do. Well, we already came to one conclusion. With the number the way it was written, we decided that I didn't need to make any adjustments to mine. Hooray, okay, I would have been just fine. But when we change this to where this is eight inches and our desired is 10.8 inches, we know we want to make some adjustments. Now we take all this information and we apply it here, okay? So our goal here is to find out how many stitches we need to increase to accommodate the circumference we need for our heel diagonal. And what we will be doing is we will be increasing, working toe up here, we will increase stitches right here on this first row before we do our heel, okay? Right here, I'm gonna take these off because I did it on these socks to show you. On this first row before my heel, you can see I worked some increases so that way I could have a larger heel diagonal on these socks, okay? So I only did it on this portion of the heel, I did not change any of the numbers here on the instep. I just changed my numbers right here, here on this portion of the heel. And the number of stitches that I increase are determined by this, okay? So we want to, it says the number of stitches to increase on the row before the short row heel and decrease on the row after the short row heel. Well, what do you mean decrease, Marley? Well, if we're gonna increase to create this extra deep short row heel, when it's all complete, we now have more stitches up here around our leg than you might need. So on the last row here, you'd wanna get rid of those stitches, okay? Unless you have a very large ankle and you need to have those extra stitches up here to accommodate your larger ankle. The best thing to know here is that you want this, this portion of your leg, when we go to that in the next video, you want it to be um, you, you want it to be tighter versus looser. Otherwise, your socks are going to slouch down and fall down into your shoe, which is, you know, that sucks. So you don't want to do that. So you don't want to overcompensate up here and really make them really large. You still want to have some negative ease up here so that way the socks will stay up. But if you have larger ankles, when we increase down here for your heel depth to accommodate for the heel diagonal, you can get rid of those stitches here if you don't need them for the extra circumference up here around on your ankle or you can leave them there to keep those stitches large for your larger ankle all right so this is really handy here that's why we want to know how much we're going to decrease as well so this is what we're going to do we take we take the desired sock heel diagonal which based on our example here is 10.8 so let's take that so we take 10.8 and we subtract the actual sock heel diagonal. So that's the one where we, we just filled in a number here. So we filled in eight. So we've, we're gonna fill in eight. So if we take <laughs> 10.8 minus eight equals 2.8 inches. So it's a 2.8 inch difference, okay? So that equals X. Then we take X times the stitch gauge. So we're gonna take 2.8 inches times Eight, because that's how many stitches we have, right? So we're gonna multiply, or that's how many stitches per inch times eight equals 22.4 stitches, all right? That means right now, so 22.5, so you can't you know, do a, a half of a stitch, so you round to an even number, so it'd be 22. So we would round that then to 22 stitches. So this means, that if we want our sock, let's see, where'd I go with it? If we wanted this sock, not this one, this one. <laughs> if we wanted this sock to go from this measurement right here that we've created here to a deeper heel so that we could have a larger heel diagonal, we would wanna increase 22 stitches right here on this one row. That's a lot of stitches. So that's where you have to decide man, do I really want to do that all on one row? Or maybe I just want to choose a larger size, or maybe this isn't the sock pattern for me. Well, let's, let's get rid of the third option, because if it's not the sock pattern for you, great, then that's an easy decision. You move on, you choose a different sock pattern. If you decide, okay, I want to do this, but I don't want to add those all on the same row, can I split them up on rows? You could do that. So we have the 22 stitches here. So this one here, we have 22 stitches. 
And typically, as I mentioned, you would increase those right there on the first row right before your heel. But maybe you want to increase them like uh, do three different sets of increase. Maybe you do a row of increases, a row even, a row of increases, and a row even to, until you get up to the 22. You could do that, sort of like leading up to the size of the heel you need. And you can do that based on however you're comfortable with the way your sock construction is, okay? If you need that big of a difference of the sock diagonal of that's written in the pattern versus your actual foot, you do what works best for you to make it work. Could you do all 22 in this first row here? Yeah, I guess you could. Um, I don't think I would though. I think I would divide those up. But essentially, you would increase then to 22 stitches. So you increase 22 stitches. And what does this mean down here? It says the new total heel stitches. So over here, these numbers are not real. I just wanna reiterate that. We had 20 stitches. So we had 20. So essentially we're gonna take 20 and we're gonna add 22. So our new stitch or our new total heel stitches would have been 42. I mean, that's totally not realistic. Like <laughs> first off that just, it, the numbers just don't jive, right? Like I'm just throwing in numbers. I just wanna throw that out. But this would be our new, our new uh, heel stitch count. And then right here it says the final heel. Well, now that we have 42 stitches versus the 20 stitches we had before, we have to figure out what our new final heel is, right? Because we don't we don't want this really pointy heel over so many stitches. We want to figure out what it needs to be. So we would take the 42 and we would divide that by three and get 14. So now you have 14 stitches in your no man zone versus six. And if you needed to know how wide that would be, you would take 14 and you would divide that by eight. So 14 divided by eight and you would find out that now it's 1.75 inches instead of just the seven five inches. Can you see how that number comes into play? All right, all right, so let's go to the next page. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not scaring you all with this math. It's really not too difficult. I do wanna also point out that I highlighted this color and it coincides with the written instructions as we carry on with this. So that highlight is important here. Okay. Now it says the new number of rows on each half of the short row heel. It says does not include the two pickup rows. So what that means there, it doesn't include the two center rows that I just showed you to do on the German short row heel. We wanna know how many rows we are using on the first half of the heel and how many are we using on the second half of the heel. Can you figure out why we need to know that? I know you know because it helps us understand how long that wedge is gonna be. So if we are working on toe up socks, we know how, sh how much room to leave on the foot of our sock to accommodate the length of that heel, all right? So for this, all you need to do is take your new total heel stitches. So for us, that was 42. And we would subtract our new final heel stitches, which would be 14. So right here, we take 42 minus 14 and that would give us 28. Now we take that 28 and it says 28 equals the number of rows to work on each half of the short row heel. And you might be like, wait Marley, there's, there's 28 stitches, but what, what, what does that mean? How do you know that's how many rows? Well, we have 28 stitches and rows because as we have our no man zone here, I'm gonna say no man zone, these are our markers, okay? Those are our markers. And then we have all of these stitches out here and all of these stitches out here. And these are the ones that we worked our double stitch. So we came across, we came over here, we worked our double stitch. And we came across, we came over here, we worked our double stitch. We came across to one before the double stitch and worked our double stitch. Came across one before and came across. You see how I'm going back and forth? If you were to count each of these rows, so one, two, three, four rows, and we've worked one, two, three, four stitches. So see how our stitch count coincides with the number of rows we have? Does that make sense? So by figuring out that we have 28 stitches, because see, we just took our total number and we subtracted our no man zone stitches and we came out with 28. And if we wanted to know how many stitches were on either side of our no man zone, we would take 28 and divide that by two. So we would get 14. So essentially we'd have 14 here, we'd have 14 here, and we'd have 14 here. Pretty easy, right? But we are more concerned about the 28. And the reason for that is we wanna know 
how big this wedge is going to be, how long is it going to be. And we need to know that because we're doing toe up, right? It's not as important if we were doing top down, but for toe up, it's, it's important especially. So um, right here, new number of short row turns on either side of the heel. That's what we just figured out. So we essentially take the, the 28 number up here. So this is 28 and we divide that by two and that gives us the 14. And so on either side, we have 14 and 14. You with me on that? And then new measurement of each half of the short row heel. This is what we did here. So essentially we take the 28 and we divide that by our row gauge, which was 10.5. So let's see, 28 divided by 10.5 equals so this wedge is 2.6 inches. So if we had, let's draw a foot here. <laughs> That's a terrible foot. But if this length of our foot is 10 inches and this wedge portion here, right? So this is, this is our wedge. So this, this wedge portion right here, if that measures 2.6 inches, then we would take 10 minus 2.6 equals 7.4. So we would work from our toe to our heel 7.4 inches, knowing that this portion of our heel that we're creating is 2.6. And when we add these two together, we get that. You with me? You see how that works up? I can hear some of you moaning out there as well. It's a lot of math. Yes, it's a lot of math. But if you want to customize your socks, this is this is one way you can do it here. OK, so this here, what did we say it was 2.6 inches. So now we have all the numbers. How do we apply it to the pattern? Well, what I've done is I've taken the pattern that we just went over. So this is the same pattern. I've just eliminated all the numbers that I had filled in there. And this is where you would fill in your own numbers that you just figured out. So I have the basic instructions of the German short row, basic wrap and turn, because this shows you how to get rid of that, that hole once again. But right here, German short row heel, and this is either worked on two circulars or magic loop once again, because you have the needle too. And you'll notice that I've highlighted the sections and they coincide with the highlights on here. So um, the yellow, here's the yellow, so that's 14, so I can fill in, that's 14. I'm gonna find the orange and that's 14. And this is yellow again, so I fill in 14. So now I can just follow along with this set of instructions with my own numbers. And I carry on, here's my center short row. Everything's, everything's the same. Once again, I can come up here, fill in my numbers, and this would be 14, and then you carry on, and there you go. All right, so that's a lot of math to customize, but I know some of you out there who are like, I hope this sock fits, I have a very large instep, I have large ankles, I have a large heel diagonal, I'm just not sure it's gonna fit. Well. Now you know you can take this worksheet and calculate out what is the heel diagonal of the sock as it's written and what is the heel diagonal you need. If it is a necessary uh, point that you have to add more, you can work through this worksheet and figure out how to add those stitches and then the instructions are written out for you pretty plainly. I know it's a lot of math. I tried to write this out really in a way that made sense and I hope that you found it that way. Um, I mean, breaking it up into charts like this of here's what we're trying to get, here's our answer, and this is how we get it. That really makes sense to me. And if you have any trouble, you can always come back to this video and work through the math together with me. But overall, I think because in video one, I told many of you who have larger ankles or larger insteps that if you had to choose a sock size um, and you were in between sizes or something, if you have larger insteps to go up versus down, you might find that you don't have to do any of this customization with this particular sock. And for the most part, I do wanna mention, it's rare that you have to do a lot of customization with socks unless you really do have a larger instep. And then once you figure that stuff out, any sort of future sock knitting will be a, like a no-brainer for you. You'll be like, oh, I know how this works out. I can do this with, in, without any problem. And you can use this worksheet. Now, having said that, is this the only way to customize socks? Absolutely not. There's lots of different ways. And maybe this is too math-oriented for you and you're just more willy-nilly of, 
look, I'm just gonna work, instead of half the number of stitches, I'm gonna work more than half the number of stitches for the heel to make it deeper. You absolutely could do that if you want to. Just remember that shortens your instep section, so it doesn't necessarily make it so that the top of the sock is gonna fit well. It might be too snug still, even with the deeper uh, heel um, that you're creating. But you decide what works best for you. Overall, <laughs> this is all the information I have to give you for video two. Can you see now why I wanted you to watch the whole thing through before you tackle your socks? Okay, now that you've watched the whole thing through, what I need you to do, grab your socks, your homework, Make sure you have that marker in it and you've added your lifeline. So that way, as you're working your German short rows, if you need to rip them out, you can. Then go back to the German short row section of this video and start chipping away at those short rows. Work along with me. Make sure you pull those double stitches nice and snug. So every time you pull that yarn over the top and you bring it back forward for the purl or you keep it in back for the knit, keep that stitch nice and tight. The tighter you keep it, the, the less likely you are to have holes in your actual sock. Um, and that's it. And then do the wrap and turns. Uh, I find them very easy to do and you won't get holes in your joins. It's just like, it's a great little fix and it's super easy to do. Um, I know you can do it. Okay, that's your homework. Get your heel complete. And if the heel is complete before the next video, take a minute and go ahead and start your second sock. Why not? Don't get the dreaded second sock syndrome. Go back to video one, use the Judy's Magic Cast On, work those increases for the toe, get your, your foot worked up, and then you can work that heel once again, just like this. And you'll be ready in no time for video three. Speaking of video three, I know there are some of you out there that are like, okay, great, I'm past the heel, I just can carry on, work the leg, and I'm good, I don't need to come back for video three. Well, I do want to mention that in video three, I will be giving a lot of extra information. I'm gonna talk about not only how to work those leg stitches, how to choose the right cuff for your sock. I also wanna talk about how to have a pattern stitch incorporated into your sock. And from there, I wanna talk about some of the other sock construction that is out there so that way you're aware of it and you can add all of that to your knitter's toolbox. So I guess overall, I just remind you that this is a three-part series. Don't leave me after part number two. Don't ghost me. Come back to part number three so that way you can get the full set of instructions. And those instructions are available for free and the link will be in that same blog post that I provided in the video description box below. So everything you need is always in one spot or as I mentioned before, you could purchase the ad-free PDF and have it all together nice and tidy. Um, that's a choice for you to make. So I hope you have learned a lot in this video. Thank you so much for sticking with me through the end. Make sure you have hit subscribe, make sure you have hit that like button. And if you wouldn't mind, leave me a comment below and let me know something that you learned in today's video that you know for sure you can carry on for some of your future projects. I would love to know what, what that might be. As you're working on your sock, don't hesitate to share with me on social media. Use hashtag Marley Bird or hashtag Ron Strong. He's checking in as well on the knit and the crochet socks. We are having so much fun with this sock along, watching all of you and your excitement and your achievements. It's, it's, a, great, it's a great time for us as well. So make sure you tag us so that way we can be sure to smash your like button. I'm Marley Bird and I will talk to you guys again very soon, especially in video three. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've put a link right over there, or you can watch a couple of the videos I've already selected for you right down there. If you wanna follow me on social media, I've put my links right over there. You could have all Marley all the time. Bye guys.